Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And before we get to today's subject, which is uh, using the merge function of IBM sort, of DF sort, I wanted to announce an initiative we have started in the community, a bunch of community members. One of them is Gerard Wassink. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. If not, I'm sorry, Gerard. Uh, and Mike Grossman, uh, who is one of the people who've ported Brex to MBS and uh, recently made a video about it, and then myself. And uh, uh, we, I, I drafted this text here, and then, and then uh, Mike and Gerard posted it on Mike on uh, Gerard's website, which is Geronimo. Uh, Geronimo three seventy dot nl. I will post the full link of the petition under this video that you're watching right now, so you can follow with your browser, or phones or iPads, whatever, that's Geronimo, um, that's Gerard's Wassing's website, and uh, in there, as you just saw, is this petition. Now, in this petition uh, called, uh, the petition's name is FreeXA, what, we, what we're doing is we're asking IBM to release to the community uh, MBS uh, XA, and as you can see here, uh, here's the text of the petition. We therefore respectfully petition IBM to release to the uh, learning and enthusiast community um, the 31-bit operating systems MBS XA and VMXA together with the 31-bit COBOL, COBOL and PL1 compilers VS COBOL 2 and the OS PL1 optimizing compiler version 2. Those are 31-bit compilers. So this, we are petitioning as a community to IBM and I know that IBM is watching these videos um, and I know that they're listening and we have some ideas who the people are within IBM uh, who have the decisions, uh, the decision power to release these uh, operating systems to the community. Um, I don't want to say the names here because I want to put them on the spot, but I have an idea who they are and I'm talking to them. Um, and so what we're asking here is that they've given us MBS 3.8 and BM 370, uh, which is great. And here uh, I'm listing all the stuff that the community has added to these operating systems, such as uh, some, some TCP IP capability, even an HTTP server, some mailing capability. Uh, uh, some people have made um, connectors to connect the very old, the 55 year old MVT COBOL and the uh, PL1 compilers to make them access vSAM, but it's cumbersome. Uh, we've added some C compilers, but it's not ideal to work on with 16 megabytes of RAM. And so uh, that's what you get when you have only 24-bit addressability. We only can address 16 megabytes, and that's not gigabytes, megabytes of RAM uh, with those operating systems. And so it's very, very limiting. And so what we're asking here as a community uh, to IBM uh, to let us have those operating systems. Those are 31 bit, means, which means they can address two gigabytes of uh, memory. And the compilers are also 31 bit, uh, the ones that we're asking for, and we can do a lot more. And there is no limits to what this community with the creativity and the enthusiasm of this community can do to, um, to, make, to, to make these operating systems easier to learn for new entrants, for younger people who are coming to the IT world or for people who work with the with the mainframe sometimes. But, uh, you know, if you work with the mainframe, it's usually somewhere secluded and, and access to it is very, very limited and very controlled. And, and I think that's what IBM really needs. Uh, by opening up these operating systems, a lot more people will have access to them and not in 24-bit, 16 megabytes. That's just not, you can't do this anymore. Nobody's gonna take this thing seriously if it's 24-bit. But if you can get to 31-bit, then a lot more people can open up to the mainframe and we can make the mainframe uh, great again. And, uh, and so that's what we're petitioning for as a community and here's the text again the link to this is going to be in the description below this video and if you click here uh, once you get here to this page if you click here there's a, a petition running at change.org and so far as you can see here we have about 400 something people who have already signed uh, the petition one of them is me and um, it's the same text here and we're trying to get to a couple of thousand uh, so uh, people who signed the petition I think for us to be heard by IBM loud and clear I know they're hearing us right now but we want to be heard loud and clear that the community of 
developers, the community of people who want to learn about the mainframe and the people who like the mainframe and want to use it at home or for, for the hobby uh, purposes want, um, want IBM to release these uh, operating systems to the community. Um, we're not asking for something that will take away any business from IBM. Those are 35 year old operating systems. Uh, both, both MBS XA and MBM XA are 35 year old at least, maybe even 37. And so nobody's going to use this for commercial purposes. So IBM is not going to lose any business here, but it's going to gain a lot of followers. It's going to get a lot of people who are going to learn a lot from these operating systems. And uh, and it's going to contribute to uh, have more developers who understand the mainframe. And when and when um, Steve Ballmer's uh, went on on this crazy video that we all saw where he was saying developers, developers, developers. Well, he was right. It's all about developers. And I know that IBM gets it. I've had some discussions with IBM people. They understand that it's all about developers. And so, oh, see here, 418 people have already signed. And so we are asking for IBM to please release these operating systems, engage with us in a in a dialogue. Um, we understand if you want to put some limits or limitations, if you want to have some procedures so that people can obtain those operating systems, if you want some self uh, control within the community. I'm willing to engage with IBM in a dialogue, maybe with one or two more community members. And if IBM is going to um, let us know who those people are we should talk to, we will define what the rules are, just like the people in the DEC community did, right? If you, uh, the DEC uh, VMS people, they have a hobbyist license. And we're not asking for open source for those uh, code for those operating systems anyway, but as you can see here, the OpenVMS guys also have a way to register for uh, hobbies registration so they can use their um, their OpenVMS operating system. So why can't IBM do that? In fact, IBM should have much more interest in doing that because OpenVMS is kind of a dead end, but the mainframe is not a dead end. And so we want the people to know about it. So um, the links are here in the description below this video. I ask you humbly to go and register and sign you don't need to register, you just need to go and sign uh, this petition. We want to be heard loud and clear. As you can see, uh, lots of people have signed this um, and have left comments. Also leave comments why you think it's a good idea because the more we say to IBM, the more they will hear us. And I, we love IBM and we love those operating systems. We love the mainframe and we want IBM to help us to spread the gospel according to, um, to the mainframe. To the wider world and to the younger people so um, now that we've done this we can go back uh, to our original purpose and in the previous video we looked at the ibm sort uh, utility if you want to call it utility because df sort is much much more than just utility it's a whole system it's a programming language it's a business logic enabler it's a it's an indispensable component of, uh, of any mainframe operating system uh, and when I say DF sort, of course, I also include all the other commercial sort and merge utilities uh, or systems such as the sync sort and many, many others. Uh, so last time we looked at how sort works and uh, we looked at some uh, examples and played a little bit with it and so saw what we could do with it. And one of the things I said at the beginning of the video is that uh, sort is really part of business logic. and. Um, or, or application logic, it's it's part of things that happen in 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 the real life, in a business or in a government or or an institution. Um, it helps to map processes, um, business processes, and so this, today we're going to look into that a little bit more. So last time we looked at sort, and I mentioned that uh, the uh, the correct way to think of a sort utility is a sort merge. And uh, I'm sure that many of uh, you will remember the early days of PCs. They were sort and merge utilities, sometimes delivered with the operating system, the early versions of MS-DOS and even of uh, CPM. Um, and uh, I uh, played with merge when I had, I was managing once a club mailing list. And so I was merging the existing mailing list together with a new entrance to the mailing list. And so that's a typical application for merge. Um, even to this day, I think Microsoft Word has a merge uh, component to it. Um, but let's see how we do merge with uh, with the IBM sort utility. So um, we always start looking at the data first. 
So let's start here. New panel. I prepared here a um, a new data set. Uh, that's uh, well, actually, let's look at this. So I have here um, number of reset. I have here a list of books, and then the uh, the where, what kind of uh, section they belong to. So International Cookbook, World Journey of by Train, Arts and Crafts, and then I added a control card. Uh, I call it the control card in a statistical sense. Uh, the Psyche of Moshix um, and Z Psychology, because we're talking about Z mainframe. Um, and so I want to merge this together with this other list of books. Okay, let's say we're merging two libraries here. So, and this is already sorted, as you can see here, by the uh, intersection. So biology all the way down to psychology. And this is, as we saw before, supposedly also more uh, list uh, sorted already um, from R down to Z psychology for this fascinating book here, The, Psy the Psyche of Moshiks. So um, we want to merge these two lists and let's see how we accomplish this with uh, with a sort Iceman. Um, I have here a JCL, which is very similar to the JCL we used in the previous video. The only exam exception here is that we that now that we have sort in 01 and sort in, sort in 02, and here we put in sort in, sort in 2, and the output is going to be sort out 2. And the command to merge uh, will be to say uh, we're going to take because we want to keep it sorted by the interest section and not by book title. So we start uh, at column 50 with a length of 5 ascending and then we sort into um, column 1 which is the book title with a length of 35 also ascending. And if we do this then we should have a new merged list of all the books uh, sorted by the interest section. So either biology etc. And the book about the Psyche of Moshiks should be at the very bottom of that list because the intersection is Z Psychology, uh, Psychology of Mainframes. So um, why don't we execute that and see what happens with the data. Am I editing the data anywhere? Yeah, if I'm editing, of course, it can proceed. So let's make sure to get out of here. Any other? Okay, so let's run this. This is uh, Moshik 6. I don't see why this shouldn't run. Oops, except for this. Okay. Oops, submit. Job 12.22. It's 2.44 a.m. It tells me here. Uh, and maximum condition code zero. I went through well. So let's go here into DS list. Uh, let's look at sort out two. And yes, this looks correct. So as you can see here, the Psyche of Moshiks uh, came down as last because this is sorted by the interest section or by subject. Um, and so, and then, and then within that, it's sorted correctly here by um, by the topic, uh, by the title. So you can see here, advanced and comes before behavioral which comes before introduction to psychology. Um, okay, so this is how you merge. And always think that, you know, we'll t we're working with tiny, tiny uh, data sets here. In today's mainframe world, you would typically have millions and millions of records. Not unusual to have um, dozens of millions. And by the way, also uh, DFSort will work vSAMP um, databases so that um, you can directly sort data that's inside vSAM. Even though, of course, um, most vSAM would be indexed one way or another, um, but they still need sometimes to uh, sort. And by the way, uh, later in this video, I'm going to show how we can implement business logic or business processes um, and, uh, and make sort be a, a part of a business process. Okay, so this works. Um, what else can we show about this? Let's put in some more control cards. Um, so we have, as you can see here, we have here 
a control card with Zipsi. Why don't we do the following, the same also in the other and see how if this handles it correctly. Yeah, let's introduce a card here. Z mind of Moshix. Zipsi. Save it and let's see what comes out. Run this again. 1223, maximum condition code zero. Let's go look at it. Mm -hmm -hmm. Here it is. Hmm. Yeah, looks good. So the Psyche of Moshix is here, and then Z mine, because that's a Z. It, remember, this is ascending and this is ascending. Um, comes here. Now we can also, of course, try to do this descending. Maybe we want to do it this way. So then we could say here, the topic here will be descending. Okay. And of course here, the verb is merge. We saw there's 16, the previous video we mentioned there's 16 verbs that go into DF sort, IBM sort uh, program, into Iceman. Uh, one is of course sort and the other one is merge. So we already looked at two and then there's option three the 16 overall So let's run this again. Let's see what the result is Job 1224 Oop, maximum condition got 16 Something is wrong uh, Well, let's go look at what's wrong um, Okay, so I'm running your OS 390 under VMESA on um, on this uh, uh, P390 cards that I've shown in previous videos that connect into a into a PC. So it's not the fastest, but still plain enough. So let's say what it complains about. Record type X X. Exceptional access method used for. Hmm. This didn't go well, but uh, merge technique selected because that's the verb we gave it. Selection mode you selected. Hmm. I think it didn't like the descending. Let's try to run this again. Let's see if this was the problem, 1225. Yeah, so it needs to be ascending and I and it makes sense because this is ascending as well. So it cannot mix the two things. Um, okay, so we looked at this. Now let's look at one more thing that we can accomplish. I mentioned before, by the way, uh, this is the manual that we should all uh, use. I mentioned this in the previous video. And um, this is a very, very good manual. It exists for every version of sort. O sort always goes with the operating system that it's delivered for. So it doesn't have its own version numbering scheme, it just goes with the operating system. So if you have ZOS version 2.3, which is what I downloaded here from the IBM website, um, this is the DF sort that's concerning. Of course, I use OS 390, which is uh, almost 20 years older DF sort, but all this stuff uh, works very similar. I think one of the big innovations of DF sort is that you can do UTF 16 for, um, basically mapping all of the character sets, which uh, the DF sort that comes with OS 390, I don't think it's able to do. We can try putting in here UTF 16 um, later on, but I don't think it's able to process that. Um, so and one more thing is that we're working here with fixed block data sets, but of course you can also do variable blocks. And as I mentioned before, you can also work with um, with um, with vSAM um, databases as well. One more thing that we can do is, I want to show this here. We can use, as I mentioned also in the previous video, we can use um, sort or Iceman to copy, copy data from one database to the next. So if you have, um, let's say our book list and you want to copy it to a new book list, then you can just say option copy here and it will copy everything over. Or you could say sort 
fields copy okay so then it would sort everything from sort in to sort out just an example here i'm not going to run it because there's no point in copy something we already have but sometimes you want to do that if you want to copy to tape or something like that um, so that's copy which will be the third um, verb option will be the third verb we we'll looked at sort merge and option and now i want to do something uh, which is really interesting so let's look at some data let's go to the ds list data set list and let's look at sort in three so what i have here is a list of books um let's say we are a um, a university library and uh, or we're a bookshop let's say we're a bookshop near near a university somewhere on a university campus we're a bookshop and these are the books that we have on inventory and as you can see here i have here again a control card statistical control card um, and these are the books that we have on inventory the, and that that we that we sell and these are the ones that we still have how many of these books we still have on inventory and how many of these books did we sell throughout last year let's say in 2018 now we can i'm going to show you how we can use sort to um, actually implement business logic because now it's um, early march so today is actually march 3rd and it's time to reorder the new books for the year and so i want to use instead of writing a whole software program to find out uh, which ones i should order i just i just used the iceman or ibm sort df sort to order uh, books and i'm gonna say that if i sold more books in the previous year than i have on inventory then i want uh i i want sort to produce a new list with those books so um let's say this last one inside the moshex head uh, we have 500 in inventory however last year we sold 501 so this uh, means to me that it's time to order new books and i'm going to decide later how many new books i'm going to order of this particular one but uh, i'm going to create a new list which is going to populate it with all the ones that need to be rewarded let's take another example um, advanced topics in psychoanalysis uh, we sold 12 in in the previous year in 2018 and we still still have 112 in inventory so it makes no sense in this case to order new ones because we still have plenty and we probably at this rate are going to have uh, some of those books in inventory for the next uh, about 10 years or so eight years so um so let's go and implement that with sort um, and again this is just to show you how we can use sort as part of, of a business process let's go here and i have here a file called logic and and so what we do is we use sort conditionally meaning that we use sort um, to omit and include records into a new uh, output data set and by doing that we can implement the business logic okay um, so the way to do it is there are two keywords uh, one is include and one is out uh, uh, omit omit okay so include or omit and um, uh, there is some uh, there's some variations of this we're going to keep it very simple here so what we're going to say is include so let's look at the data this let's put in columns here calls and we see that this starts at column 45 and this starts at column well it should start at 60. okay so yeah, this one the ones on inventory start at 45 the ones that we sold last year start at 60 and this is the book title and this is our control card here with the biggest number so we can keep an eye on what happens with this data so let's save this and then the output of course is going to go in here and this is of course empty so let's go back here and we say that um, this is the 160 is the ones that we sold 
and 45 is the ones we have an inventory and uh, and so we say if the data item and we use here remember we have record identifier uh, ch means character for epcd characters bi means bin um, binary but not binary in the sense of the c programming language or um, or of assembler but binary in the sense of pl1 bin fixed so it's a number um, it's an integer number and um, and so we say if the number uh, with a length of four bytes starting at position 60 gt means greater as you can see here we have an if statement in here so we include and condition which means if the number stored at position 60 with a length of four is bigger than the number uh, position 45 within their each record and remember we always process one record at a time and when i say record i also mean a punch card because of course uh, a punch card is a record and uh, and if you remember, I also mentioned in the previous video that the origin of sort comes from the punch card sorters and mergers of the of the 50s, of the 40s and 50s, um, where IBM was the leading vendor. So if this is bigger than this, then include the, the record or the card into the output, um, into the sort out uh, data set. Otherwise, exclude it. So that's the that's the conditional operator here, and we can see here that we can put in equal, not equal to, greater, greater than, or less than, or less or equal to. Okay, so these are the logical operators that we have. Oh, sorry, the conditional operators. And um, why don't we try to run this with Moshix A and see what happens? I haven't done this yet. Moshix eight. Uh, condition code 16. Hmm. I wonder why that may be. Let's go to look at the output. No sort or merge control statement. Uh, yes. Yeah, of course it wants to have the sort. Um, so let's go put in here. And we say sort fields, we're going to say, uh, we're going to sort it by one to, which is the book title for 30 length character ascending. So I, this is how I want the output list to be produced. So this will be the sort out, which is sort out three. I want this to be the list of books that I need to order. So let's try to run this again. 1227, collision code zero. Hmm. Always fun. Happy little list here. Okay. Let's go look at sort out three. Okay, so something happened here. This is sorted as we as we just wrote here, sort by fields, um, by the book title ascending. So apparently this is correct. A through T and let's look at our control card here inside the Moshix head 500 501 so yes so we have 500 in inventory but we sold 501 in the previous year so it, it did end up on this list as it should have so this is the list of all the books that we need to reorder for this business year um, let's see if the list is correct um, well, something went wrong here because here we have 12, we only sold 12 and we still have 112 in inventory. So this shouldn't have gone through because, okay, I think I know what the problem is. We didn't say that this is a binary number. So let's put it in here, binary, binary. So if the, if the number of books sold in the previous year with length four binary is greater than the, um, well, we put in actually the format bi here, but we can do it this way. 
is greater than the number of books on inventory, then sort it in there. And I don't understand why uh, this one shouldn't be here. This should be here. This should be here. This, this shouldn't be here. So maybe we got the fields wrong. Let's look at this. Columns. Oh, yes. Okay, it's actually not 45, it's 46. Maybe that's why. So, no big deal. That's why we are in computers, because we just run things again. So, if the number of books sold in previous years starting at position 60 is greater than the number of books on inventory starting at position 46, and binary for both, then it ends up on the new list. And it's going to overwrite here, so nine to keep it apart and we run this again 1228 maximum condition code zero mm -hmm. okay this is a smaller list but it's still not correct <laughs> because this book should absolutely not be here this is correct this is wrong, this is correct, 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 but this one is wrong. Why is this book ending up there? I don't understand. Uh, let's run this again. <clears throat> But make it to field length three. I don't think this is the problem, but uh, I'm gonna delete it anyway. Yeah, I don't understand why this book is here. This is clearly a smaller number than this one, and the conditional is greater than. Uh, there is just something wrong about this. This first book shouldn't be there. <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain that. This is the first time this happens to me. I've used Iceman plenty. But I, if you can spot why this first record is in here, then please let me know in the comments below this video, because this absolutely shouldn't be there. Um, I have a suspicion it's about the, let's look at sorting three. Always look at the data when something doesn't work. Let's look at columns. So this starts at 46 and this starts at 60. Let's try this with data that still gives the same assessment, 12 and 13. And then let's see what comes out. And let's run this again, just like so. And okay. So now it's there, as it should be, but now let's try again to modify the input data and let's make it opposite, 13 and 12. So now it shouldn't end up on the list, right? So now it sh definitely shouldn't end up on the list of books to be reordered. 12.32. And now it's not there. So yeah, it has something to do with the length before, 
we didn't get the length correct um, but then on, on the other hand this did work correctly so I cannot explain it um, it's something very strange but um, let's try this one more time and let's say 130 on inventory and 130 129 sold so it shouldn't end up on the list we don't want it on the list let's get out of it let's run this again okay job 1233 and now it's not there so maybe I had some uh, funny characters there it's possible um, I had some copied some strange characters in there but so now it looks like uh, it maybe didn't read it as binary number I think that's the problem but uh, now it's behaving correctly so this is the list of the books that I need to order and uh, as you can see here this works beautifully I can also sort it by the number of books that I want to order or anything else that I want um, um, and so this is an example um, of a business logic that we can map with uh, with uh, with sort um, so let's say that um, the other the other thing that we can put in is, is omit so we can say instead of include we can say omit start again here from one omit um, as you can see here just trying to suppose you want to sort as you can see here this is the business case the business logic suppose you want to sort to sort by title all the books used for courses but not uh, not those for general reading in this case you can use an omit statement that excludes records containing a blank in the course department field so we don't have that list anymore i think but uh, again this is how you can well maybe we do have the list let me see Yes, so we can. This is we want to omit all the ones that are general. That's why there's no subject matter uh, field here. So we want to order all the ones that are not general reading, specialist uh, books. So let's try to do this. Um, let's put in here columns so we can see where it is. This is a 50. Okay, so then we say omit condition. Um, we say at 50 with a length of four characters equals um, blank. And then we say produce a list sorted by the book title. So we want to omit all the books which have an empty subject matter field, um, a position 50 with a length of four, one, two, three, four, five even. So let's put in here five characters and this equals to empty blank so and then we can put this into sort in sort uh, sort in and sort out this should work let's see 1234 no oh, it's waiting for us to leave to get out of this yes so it was just waiting in uh, it had a lock on the data file, so let's go look at sort out and yes um, so omit now omitted all the books that have a general um, general uh, or no specific uh, subject matter and so now we'll only left the ones with our specific so this um, this worked perfectly and uh, uh, the rest of the book is really more variations of this and uh, the extensive options, uh, all the things that... Um, oh, by the way, you can also sum books. Um, so you can uh, you can sum up uh, the number of books to the, to order. Um, and uh, by the way, another very important feature of... Uh, so you can sum and produce reports here in any way possible. Um, another important thing is to omit duplicate records in any uh, record collecting business whether it's the irs or any tax authority 
government or insurance companies or banks, there's always duplicate records. And sort is a great way to remove duplicate records. Mm. Let's see. You can, of course, also reformat uh, the data on the output. You can uh, put in blanks, you can see here. Um, you can tell it how you want the out record, that's the verb, how you want the output record to be formatted, um, extensive formatting. You can insert strings, so you can produce whole reports here, you can see. Uh, the input data would only have this, but you can put in the output data, this kind of... Uh, you can... Uh, here is here is the ASCII that I was mentioning. You can uh, convert from lower to uppercase, or vice versa, from EBCDIC to ASCII. Um, obviously, very often mainframe you have to produce ASCII because you have to send it to some kind of authority or to business partners. So, and often they would have a non-mainframe uh, system, so they need ASCII. And anytime you translate from from EBCDIC to ASCII and vice versa, you're opening up a can of worms about uh, translate tables. Um, as you can see here, <laughs> uh, it's really not that easy. Uh, you need translate tables and uh, you're opening usually up a can of worms and there's no perfect way to do it um, so you can also do hexadecimal I mean it's I would say that you know you can <laughs> that learning sort well can really make you become a master uh, at producing valuable uh, data uh, sort of like what we do with um, what we do in the Unix world with uh, with um, uh, how do you call it the, uh, the patterns uh, matching and uh, regular expressions. You can do very similar things here also with uh, with sort. And uh, let's see how we re duplicate delete records to duplicate control fields with the fields none. Um, so there is many ways to deal with uh, deleting duplicates so let's go to 35 where was it 35 is this page 35 yeah fills none um, so there is many things you can do with this. Um, we just scratched the surface, just uh, looked at the very bare minimum um, what what you can do. But uh, the, uh, one of the great things about sort is it's actually fun. Uh, you think sorting is a dumb or a, sorry a numb area of uh, computing. Uh, it's not fun. It's uh, boring. But actually, when you start playing with it. The possibilities and the and you start to see all the stuff that you can do without writing a single source a, a line of source code in COBOL or PL1 or any other language you can do very impressive stuff with uh, with sort and merge and so um, if you have access to sort or merge or uh, sync sort anything like that I would urge you even at your, in your free time to uh, start playing with it because. Um, you realize uh, how powerful this is. By the way, this sort doesn't have to be only called from uh, JCL or through the panels here. You can also call sort uh, from COBOL, from PL1, um, or from uh, any other language. So it's uh, you, you can absolutely call sort and and perform sort from uh, from your own uh, program. I think it's even possible to call um, sort from Rex. Let's see if it's calling bf sort from rex. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so you can see here that's a good example. Make it a little bigger. Here's an example of rex less silis for to call the f sort. Well, this is yeah. Link MVS Iceman. We know this one. But this is really just building a C list. It's not a real invoking the F sort. Okay, here it is. Um, 
invoking the sort from a program. Why don't we let's look at this. Yeah, um, this is not really. <laughs> IBM makes the job a little bit too, too easy sometimes. Circular references here. Uh, yeah, but it is possible to call from almost any language. I um, I do think it's possible to call from Rex. I wouldn't. I can't think of a reason why not. But uh, I can find a good reference here on the web. But so um, it is possible, to, absolutely, to call from other languages. So here's um, um, here's uh, a mini series of uh, of uh, sort um, playing with sort on the mainframe I hope you got a taste for it um, and I hope this uh, gives you motivation to start playing with it on your own if you do have any questions about uh, sort then uh, please uh, leave some uh, comments below this video if you use sync sort and uh, maybe you want to tell us how things are different on sync sort which I don't really know um, at all um, then please also leave comments for questions the same if you like this particular video please do press on the thumbs up button and if you um, haven't subscribed to the Moshix mainframe channel yet then now is a very good time to do it thank you for watching see you around soon goodbye